it's Tanya and today I thought we would make some backgrounds using the gel plate this is one of my favorite ways now to make backgrounds um it's just so easy to do it this way um I love the smooshing and dipping technique like Tim Holtz does all the time that's a great way to do it too but this is gives you a very similar result and it's super easy to do um we'll work with some distressed inks today some distressed oxides i even think we're gonna have a play with some of the um mica stains i've got those out i've got um some scrap paper out i also have some different card stocks here i have um watercolor card stock some mixed media card stock and then I had this really cheap watercolor card stock. Um, I think it was given to me. It's just super flimsy and cheap. But we're going to use that because, hey, it's going to be a background. So we're going to see if that works out. I also got some paper towels, some water out because you're going to need that. Um, I'm going to just use my small um, gel plate here. And I love these containers, by the way. These are so nice. And I keep all my gel plates in these. This one fits several. And I will link this below. This one just has my big 8x10 one in it. Which we don't really need today, but I could do use that. And we can make two at a time, honestly. We'll just get those moved to the side and... For the purpose of keeping, I'm hoping the glare down, I'm going to go ahead and put a piece of paper under this. So, hopefully you can see it better and it also keeps the glare off of it somewhat. Now, looks like, hold on, I think I've got something here. Let's just flip that over. I think it's fine. Um, you can always wipe your gel plate down before you use it in case you think there's something on it. And I'm just going to, looks like a little something right there on mine. I'm going to try to wipe off. There we go. Okay. So, honestly, there's really a lot of different ways you can use a gel plate. Everyone does it. I've watched so many videos. Everyone does these differently. So today I'm just going to show you some of the ways I like to do this and then you can try it and you can adapt it to your needs however you want to do it. Um, I think let's start with some saltwater taffy and I'm just going to kind of smush that on. Then I'm going to go in with some Kitsch Flamingo and let's see, um, I got my minis out. Those are so easy to work with and grab just a bunch of colors at one time. Let's go with some Shaded Lilac maybe. I'm just going to take a lightly mist it so we get some bubbles. Let's try one of these cheaper pieces of cardstock. I'm just going to lay that down and I'm going to take an extra piece and put it over the top and just rub that down. That's really pretty. Now you can let this dry or you can dry it on your own and you can re um, dip it, go back over it. But I really like the lightness of this one, so I think I'm going to keep this one as it is for now. I'm probably going to run out of room for places to set these to dry. So I don't feel like I need to wipe down my mat, I mean, my gel plate. So I'm just going to pick some more colors. Let's see. 
I have my color charts here. So I'm going to try to find, let's see, let's look for Winterberry. Winterberry. Let's go with, let's see, Cocktail Party. That's such a pretty color. Sugary Gumdrop. And you can use these to die cut from them. You can use them as backgrounds. Um, that's Peppermint Stick. Let's use that. Um, where is Cocktail Party? I just used that the other day. Okay. One second. I'm trying to find Cocktail Party. I need to label the tops of mine. Okay. So you definitely want to shake these up. So I'm going to go back in with some shaded lilac on this one. Doesn't have to be perfect. Just kind of patting it around. Then I'm just going to take my brayer and kind of just go over a little bit. Let's remove that. Okay, so I'm just going to do a little spray of peppermint stick, some cocktail party, I love this color, sugary gumdrop, winterberry. And now you could take your brayer and go over it. I have these little um, jelly arts um, gel print things. And I'm just going to take this and kind of do this. And then let's use, let's see. Let's go with some mixed media paper this time. If I can get a piece of it off of the stuff. And I am just gonna lightly miss this. Go lay this down. Again, take my scrap. Lay it on top. Now that's really pretty. And then we still have enough on here that we could do actually a second one. So let's take a piece of this kind of cheaper one. Let's just add some water. Um, you know what, let's add just a little bit more of the winter berry. That. Lay that down. And that is that one. So that's our like second pull from those colors. Um, let's see. I'm going to, I thought, yeah, I'm going to wipe this off. And you can use a baby wipe for this. I just use water and a paper towel sometimes. It's just, it's easy, especially if I'm still printing. Okay, let's try some oxides and let's do the same colors because I'm pretty sure. Okay, I don't have my dusty Concord and oxide out. Let's go with Victorian velvet and oxide. Oh, 
I thought I had color out, but I guess not. So we're going to go with the Victorian velvet. So instead of doing the um, shaded lilac, we're going with Victorian velvet distressed oxide. And again, I'm just going to run my brayer over that to get rid of any of the lines from the um, ink pad. I'm going to do the same thing, same colors as we did before, the Winterberry. Peppermint, Cocktail Party, Sugary Gumdrop. This is a really pretty color too. Okay, we're going to take one of our little Jelly Arts things. Let's do, let's do these wider ones this time. Just going to kind of grab some paper. Let's go with, oh, uh, that's my dead watercolor. I thought I had mixed media. Let's do a mixed media this time. Put that right there. it down these will be really nice for um die cutting i'm thinking you could die cut out that new santa um die some old santa die with this um, I actually have it right here. This one right here. This would be great for his outfit. So this is Santa Greetings Colorize. And I will link all this stuff below. But yeah. You could also add some more color here if you wanted. Or you could just spritz it with some water. But I like it like it is. I kind of like some of the white showing. So let's sit that one somewhere to draw. I'm running out of spaces already. Okay, let's add some different colors now. Let's see. Let's add... Um, what is this? Oh, that would be pretty, maybe. Um, where is that one at? I'm looking for the Wonderland one. know what I'm going to do after this video. I'm going to be labeling the tops of my Monica stain. Okay. Let's add these two colors. Oh, the top's trying to come off. Let's add just a little spritz of water. Grab some paper. Let's see. I actually like the texture on that cheap paper, so let's use a piece of that. And I kind of twist this every time because sometimes these are really nice to use afterwards. You get all kinds of colors and they make for great backgrounds. I have a whole container of backgrounds I do. Some days when I don't really feel like doing too much else, I'll do backgrounds. So there's that one. And you know what? I think this would be pretty if we just move it around a little bit more. Like that. And like I said, you can always take these back in and re-dip them. Pick up color. And the mica stains are showing up really pretty on these. 
let me see this is the first one we did it's almost dry look how light that has gotten since we let it dry that's really that'll make a really pretty subtle background it's got some spray on it where it was back here drying I guess I sprayed and got it on there this one did the same but I'm fine with that I really like this one so as they're drying Wow, look at the, I hope you can see that. Look at that mica in that one. That's really pretty. Okay, let's see. Let's wipe this down. Let's go in with, um, let's do another oxide. How about peacock feather? And you can do oxides and inks together too if you want to. And I still have some ink on here, but I'm not stressing that. I'm just gonna Today is more about just playing around. Honestly, I woke up this morning with a terrible headache. I was going to create a card today, but I just did not feel up to it. So I thought I want to do something. Why not just, oh, oops, I want to spray that. Why not just make some backgrounds to have on hand? a really pretty blue one Let's see okay let's move that one to the side um let's clean this off you can honestly get another print from that but we're just gonna wipe it off for now Okay, let's do, let's do some Halloween mica colors. Let's go with, oh, my favorite one probably of these is Wicked Elixir. Love this color. You know what goes good with Wicked Elixir. Twisted Citron. So let's put some Twisted Citron down. And we are going to get a paper towel. If I can get to it. My desk is very cluttered right now. We're going to just clean this off. I don't want to mix that blue in with the green. Okay. And let's go in with some mixing. Let's just mix it up a little bit. Get those little bubbles. Um, grab some. Let's do watercolor, I guess. Feel very disorganized today. So much stuff on my desk, and I'm usually super organized when I'm 
making things, so. That's really neat. And you can mix as many colors as you want. I just like the, the two greens together for this one. I think that'll make a really cool Halloween background. Okay, let's see. Again, I'm running out of spaces here. So let's add some of the blue to the green. Oh, like I said, I'm not getting stuff over. Let's just see what we get here. Again, we'll just go in and do a little bit of mixing up. this one's really neat um you can almost go over it let's try adding some of the pink let's see let's use hmm. let me get this just back up again this is sugary gumdrop let's add a little bit of that with the sugary gum drop at it and like I said you can always just go back in and spritz it with water if you want to get some of that ink moving around a little bit more okay we'll set that one aside to dry now Let's do, let's do a distressed looking colored one because I'm all about the browns and the greens. Let's do some little paper. Um, I think my tea dye honestly needs to be re-inked, re but we'll try it. And vintage photo probably my absolutely most used distress color <laughs> let me clean this fryer off paper oh oops I'll spray it and I'm gonna dip it wrong side No, I really like that. That looks like a really old piece of paper. I would probably soften these edges up a bit. And there we go. 
I really like the way that looks. Let's see. Let's move that to the side. Now, I'm going to show you something else. Let's use a... Let's use a stencil. Let's see. I have this one here. I probably cannot link this one because I do not remember where I got this stencil from, to be honest with you. Let's go with some salvage patina. This is just the ink, not the oxide. I'm going to wipe my brayer off. A little bit brown there. Not that I mind a little bit of the brown getting on here. I think it'll look good with the salvage patina. But. So what we're going to do is take a piece. We'll go ahead and do, let's do mixed media again. And we're just going to, oops, almost forgot to spray again down so we just got a little light bit of color on there now what we're going to do is we're going to grab our let's see where is it at salvage patina in the oxide we're going to wipe this off put our stencil down and we're just going to that goes through. I'll just use a brush, but we will see. It's so hard to see the inks on the gel plates. Okay, we're going to lift the stencil off. And we can still use that, by the way. We're not going to wet this. Just gonna lay it down. There you go. So you can definitely use stencils also. Now let me show you one more thing you can do. Since this stencil still has ink on it. You can put this down here like this. Press it down. Lift it up. See what can we use? Where it is? Let's use this one. Let's put it back down on there. And you get that little bit of subtle pattern on there and honestly it's still some on here I can probably not my paper underneath if it's ripping but I don't know if you can see that or not but you can still see it's a little bit of that pattern on there it's also still some on the stencil so you can still press some more of that down and I'm sure it would probably pick it up let's use a piece of this Cheaper paper. Let's see if we can pick that up. Yeah, it 
mix it up. So that's just like a subtle bit. And then you can always go in with some of your mica sprays or whatever you want, maybe. Just to add a little extra color. Let's do... Now, the last thing I'm going to show you that I do is you know about this kind of smooshy technique Tom does. So let's just do that and I'm going to do it with, let's see, um, let's use some prize ribbon, maybe some cracked pistachio oh. and I usually put my later color down first but you know is what it is <laughs> so I am going to spray this because I want to get those bubbles. Now we know how we'll use the we'll use the cheaper paper again. So we know how Tom does the little tap, tap, tap smooshy technique to get the color on. So this will work the same way on a gel plate as he does on the, the media mat. And I really like it on the gel plate because I feel like it really just goes a long way. So you can dry this in between and then go back and tap more so you build up that color just like if you're using it on your media mat. I don't have my um, heat tool plugged in, but you get the idea that you can just keep going in and tapping to fill in that color. And you can always go back to one of your other gel prints if you want to add extra color to it and use that to tap up some of the color. Like, what if I want to add some color to this one? So I can add some of that green and blue to that one. Okay, so here's what we made today. I think this is probably my favorite one of all. It's very distressed, paper looking. Really like this one. Here's this one. Some of these are still a little bit damp. I don't know if you can see the mica in that, it's really pretty. This one has really pretty mica. I think these red ones will be great for cutting out that Santa. I might do that instead of using them as backgrounds. Then we have this one. Very subtle background. This would be really pretty. Cut out some um, die cut flowers from or something. The dot one we did with the stencil. Here's that green and blue one. This one would be really pretty for like spring or beachy. Here's another pink one. This would be really pretty with just like some flowers stamped on it and a nice sentiment. I really like this one too with the blue and the green kind of mixed together. Here's that awesome one I said would be good for Halloween. The greens, the mauve, I mean the um, Twisted Citron and the Mica Spray. These are probably my least two favorites from today, but I can definitely use these for die cutting something out of. 
and that was all the ones we made today and like i said i do have a whole container of backgrounds and i keep even like if i cut something from them i'll keep the little extra pieces so some of these are done with paint some of them with inks it just depends i've used stencils and different things for texture you don't have a jelly plate I highly recommend one because they make some amazing amazing backgrounds and this is done with my round jelly plate this is done with my triangle one this was with bubble wrap so i'm just gonna come through these here's another one done with that stencil we used today this was a bigger piece but i used part of it this is probably one of my favorite ones i've ever done i have here's this one but here's the other part of that one i absolutely love this one it's probably my favorite one i've ever done here's one using some tim stamps another with the um round ones this one i did two sides because this side didn't turn out it was just too light and i did this side this I just saved. This was an accident, but I was like, hmm, I like that. I'm going to use that for something. And then here's another jelly print. And then I also keep like my clean off pages because these are great for die cutting from. And I have, in case you're wondering, I have um, used feathers to jelly print. I'll have to show you those. But like this would be really nice for a background this part here and just like these are great for die cutting or using for additional pieces like for um um what's the word i'm looking for oh collaging my brain is not braining today. So there's those. And I will add these as soon as they're completely dry to that bin. Okay, so here are a few of the feathers I've done with the gel print. So let me see. I'm trying to see if I you can see this. And I stamped it. And I'll have to do another video of how I did these. These are done with paint, though. So I just want to show you these since I showed you the um, paper that I saved from doing these. I love this one right here. And there you have it. So again, I hope this is encouraging to you to create something even on those days. You may not want to create a card or do die cutting or stamping. You can always pull out a jelly print, print plate and do some backgrounds. Get some card color on cards that you can have for die cutting. It's just a great way to really like do something creative without having to really think about it to be honest today like i said my brain's not braining woke up with a terrible headache it's just it's it's been a lot today so <laughs> this was a great way for me to get creative without having to overthink everything or to have to have a plan for a card or or to to build something I hope you're inspired to create something today. As always, everything will be linked in the description box below. They are affiliate links, but by you clicking and purchasing from those links, it helps me to keep sharing with you and keeps this channel going. And I do truly appreciate you clicking those links. Thank you for watching and hope you have a great day.